this video I'll be taking you through my uh, sterilizer build um, it works quite well if we lift it up you can really see the steam hammering out Um, the boiler's going to be, it's going to be a, a, a homemade boiler slant steam generator and it's going to sit separate from the, the steam barrels which I'm going to use. Um, this is obviously it here. The reason why I'm not doing the, the more traditional I suppose method of having the element in the bottom of the barrel down here which you see a lot of guys do is because I actually, I had one like this and um, I had a problem with the water supply shutting off uh, halfway through and what had happened is that that element cooked off all the water um, and started heating up the metal to a few hundred degrees which then started burning all the wood that's in there and so it basically turned it into a big combustible barrel which was highly dangerous now um, that can happen if you have a failure of the float valve or the w failure of the water supply so I decided to, to reduce that risk of a fire and build a uh, boiler separate so here's the boiler um, this is actually a a, a honey um, jar or vat I suppose you call it barrel um, and so it's designed for collecting honey in, and it's actually got a strainer which comes with it and you put your honey frames in there if you know much about beekeeping and the honey drips down and I already had a hole drilled in it down here so what I did was just it fit in there perfectly I just replaced that with a tri-clamp fitting here um, and now that tri-clamp I, I got one of these these elements, two and a half thousand watt element, and this just sits straight through there, mounts into there with a tri clamp fitting which goes over the top. And so that tri clamp fitting squeezes it in. And so that's that's at the bottom there. And here's the float valve I'm, I'm having here, which is sitting just above it. Um, and so it should fill the water supply up to about, about that deep there. So it should cover that element nicely. This was actually. This um, float valve was in the barrel that nearly went up on me. That's why it's all charred. It got quite hot in there, but surprisingly it actually still functions and it didn't destroy any of the seals, so I'm pretty happy about that. And up the top here, I've just got another tri-clamp, which I've drilled a hole in, and I've added this piece in here. That's just going to have that tap there put on the outside of it so you can actually put the lid on, turn the, on, turn the element on um, with a PID controller, and open that valve and it will just start hammering um, air out, uh, steam out, sorry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insulate all of this. The lids actually comes already insulated and it comes with a few clamp downs on it. So the lid's actually pretty good already. So once I get all this insulated I'll take it for a test run and um, I'll show you guys uh, what it can do. Um, I'm hoping it can pump out enough steam with a 2,500 uh, watt element in the bottom. Um, it is, I think, running about 11 amps, and we only run 10 amps here, so there is that problem I've got to overcome. I'm hoping uh, my wiring in there will be able to take it, but I probably will get an electrician and, and um, get him to wire up a 15 amp fuse in for me to run it full time. So we'll get this, um, we'll get this finished, we'll get this insulated, and I'll take it for a test run and show you guys. We have the main body of it insulated now. I've used uh, K-Flex sheeting um, and you can see it there, it's soft malleable and it's, it's highly insulative um, it doesn't have a sticky component to it so I've actually just used tape to hold a wrap of it around and I've, I've cut out spaces in it for all the fittings um, and the pipe through the side down here now the reason I haven't glued it on and I've used tape is my last barrel I, I had that nearly caught on fire I'd actually glued it on with a high heat glue and it worked surprisingly well but the only problem was that after I, the, after I nearly destroyed the barrel and had to throw it out the K-Flex was all stuck to the side of it so that all had to be tossed out as well now it's quite expensive this stuff here so I actually want to keep it I don't want it to get destroyed if this container was ever to get destroyed so I've used this uh, metallic tape to strap it on this tape I've actually used quite a bit and it's um it's actually really good it's, it's got a real high tack to it um, and it doesn't wear away that quick so that should stay on there for quite some time um, there's nothing on the bottom yet I'm just going to sit it on a sheet of K-Flex to test it to insulate the bottom underneath and the top actually comes insulated now to connect it from here down to down to this the connection on there on the drum I'm actually going to try using these I use one for a water input um, 
these are only say they're good up to 90 degrees I'm gonna put 99 degrees odd through it um, so we'll see how they go and I've got some K-Flex sheeting here to go around them so they'll come off this pipe here and that K-Flex sheeting will just feed over that and it'll feed round and it'll feed down into here so I want to get this this going now and I'm gonna see I've got a on the top of that barrel I've got a thermometer which I can see how how hot the barrel gets so I'm going to time it to see how long it takes to get up to up to nearly a hundred degrees so we'll get that done now and we'll um we'll show you once it's going right we've got it hooked up plugged in turned on so it connected to this barrel here what I've wrapped this barrel in is a um like a, a, a sleeping mat for camping it's full on one side and foam on the other it's about 12 millimeters thick i don't know what that is half an inch or something um and uh imperial um so this is on now this is heating up and this should get warm enough and just pump steam out down this line here straight into here of where it will enter down the bottom there um, i really i should have the top insulated as well or else the steam will just condense on the top um, but I'm just going to see how I go for now. I've got a little thermometer once it starts hammering its steam out here. I'll put a thermometer in there, connect, connects onto that, and we'll get a um, temperature reading from it. So I'll let this go for an hour, and um, yeah, we'll see how efficient it is. Okay, it's been running for maybe 45 minutes to an hour now. And um, all is looking well. I've actually had to put a wee spacer under here because there's no vent hole on the top of this. Um, and it will slowly build up pressure. But you can see the steam coming out of it. And you can see it's sitting at... Um, it's at 92, 92 degrees. This top is very, very hot. Um, so, and it's really windy here today. So as the wind gusts across it, you can actually see that drop a degree or two. Um, you can see the steam blowing around so I think once I get that sealed we should be able to push that closer to a hundred um, this this insulator here I've got on the side of it's done its job really well it's it's mildly warm to the touch but I mean we're not getting a lot of heat escape through there so is this here this is really good you can see this little bump here with a join and if you give that a squeeze you can feel some warmth coming through it so i might double wrap that there just to really add some insulation to it and add more of this tape just holding it nice and flat you can see my boiler unit here it's actually starting to bulge now i believe that is the the k-flex this is all k-flex here it's a roll of it i think when the k-flex heats it expands and of course um it's obviously found a path of least resistance as the span and expand and create this this bulge here so i'm just going to wrap more of this metallic tape around it and make that um a bit firmer i've also got a bit of water leaking i believe it's leaking out this pipe here as it connects so i haven't stuck any thread seal on there so which i will but other than that it's um yeah it's working brilliantly the top of that's um you know it's not really hot at all it's kind of warm but i don't know if that's warmth from being the sun or what so that's insulated well so we'll just tie up in the next couple of days, we'll tidy the rest of this up, um, get all this wrapped up properly, get some more of this insulation for the top, maybe another wrap around the side, um, and yeah, keep this, keep this going. You can see there it's uh, 94, so we're closing in on 100 degrees. Uh, ideally you want it as close to 100 degrees as you can for um, sterilisation.